Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Plumel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I'm currently at 173 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250 by the end of the year. So please help a brother out and like, comment, and subscribe. You can also catch this, previous, and future episodes on your favorite podcasting platforms. Let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Caroline Susie, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Dallas, Texas. All right, well, <clears throat> welcome back to the hot sauce. Today we have a uh, fellow media spokesperson, Caroline Susie. Uh, welcome in. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to put her in the hot seat here. And Ooh, why don't you? No, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, I'm from Louisiana. You're in Texas. So, you know, we always like to talk about the seasoning and all that stuff. Yes, all yeah. the spices, please. Absolutely. All right, so. Uh, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us about your journey into the profession, what did you, where you went to school, um, internship, and the jobs that you've had over time. Go for it. Uh, well, first of all, I just have to say I'm a huge fan of the pod, and I'm so excited to finally be on, so yay. Um, so awesome. Hi, my name is Caroline Susie, registered dietitian, spokesperson, um, and we'll talk about my current employer, but I'm a consultant for Mercer. We'll get to that part later. Uh, but starting out 20 years ago, baby dietitian, I graduated from the University of Oklahoma, uh, which is kind of weird being from Texas to cross the Red River. But yeah, so, uh, you know, what got me into this profession, it, it's kind of sad, but then it'll turn funny. Um, sad part first, one of my friends, very young, we were like in seventh grade, started throwing away her lunch. And I, it, so, you know, it took, you know, I didn't know what disordered eating was, I, you know, was a little kid and anyway watching her kind of go through that journey that's where I first she met with a dietitian and I was like well what do you do and she's like well we talk about food and um the dietitian that she met with is like the biggest name in disordered eating like I think back 20 years ago or 25 years ago 30 years ago how old are we um and this this woman has built a whole empire um on on educating fellow dietitians on disordered eating so side note i can say i knew her when um but yeah that's where i first learned what a dietitian was and then um, my freshman year true story it's the only class i didn't cut and i was i still am social but i you know cutting class left and right going to every party like living my best 18 year old life and i just kind of took that as a sign like that okay wow like i'm really interested in this that no matter what i am making it to this lecture um so that's kind of kind of my forte into it and then um i at ou um i don't know if they do this anymore but they had a coordinated program so if you got accepted into their program they would give you your internship so it was it was uh, as, as a social person it was a little stressful because it was very condensed so um, in addition to all your schoolwork, you are doing your rotation and then everything else outside of that. So like obviously trying to work to have money and, and, you know, everything that goes along being in college. Um, but yeah, it was a concentrated like five semester situation, but afterwards you had your bachelor's and you had your hours. So you were ready to sit for your RD exam. So in hindsight, I was like, Oh, look, that worked out beautifully. Um, easy transition. So yeah, that's, I came back to Dallas after school and uh, got my first job as a baby dietitian in an outpatient uh, diabetes education clinic. And I was like gonna change the world and you know help everybody live their best blood sugar life. So we did um, all types of diabetes, uh, mainly type two and gestational, uh, also dabbled in uh, some weight management as well. So that was kind of what kicked me off. And then you want me to keep going on that? Yeah, yeah. keep going, I'm <laughs> loving it, keep going. This is always great to hear, yeah, keep going. Uh, well, and I thought I was making so much money too. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, like, I can't believe I'm, get, I'm getting paid to do this. This is insane. I, I laugh when I think about how little it was 20 years ago. Um, but I segued from from that outpatient clinic to bariatrics. Um, bariatrics, if, if you're a younger dietitian listening to this pod, this is going to be a little foreign to you. But back in like the early 2000s, it was like the wild, wild west. Like all these clinics were popping up and every surgeon was getting in on it. And um, you were, they were all over TV advertising. Uh, conferences were just the biggest parties ever. I mean, it was just insane walking into that world. Uh, but it was, uh, it was a fun world. And it, that might be a controversial topic, but seeing um, 
when you, when you were working with good surgeons, and I say good from the standpoint of really not just operating on everybody, but, but operating on people that were, were in it for the long haul, not long haul and ready to make some of these changes to see them get their life back and their health back was just, it, I just felt like I was making such a difference. So um, I loved that. And I did that for um, a number of years. And then I pivoted to corporate wellness, which was a complete accident. So anybody that's ever looking for a career change, here's my advice to you, volunteer, because you never know who your next boss is going to be. And they might, be, they might be in the room with you. So I was volunteering and yeah, somebody is like, hey, um, we need a dietitian in our wellness center. It was an oil and gas company. And if you're, if you ever worked for an oil and gas company, when oil is making money, they don't, they can't spend it fast enough. It's just bananas. Uh, so I, I was, I was there when it was really, uh, when they had everything going on, the place I worked had, um, onsite cafeterias, they had multiple, uh, they had a, um, onsite daycare. So there's dietitians in both of those. Uh, they had an onsite wellness center that had, I mean, it was like wellness center on steroids, like not just like an exercise facility, uh, but also they had a rock climbing wall, a pool. Um, ironically, there were tanning beds, which again, this was like a different time, but it was, it was a full, a full I know, wild. Um, but yeah, so they had dietitians educating their employees. They had dietitians in HR helping you navigate benefits if you were newly diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So I kind of feel like they were ahead of the curve. Um, but, but early adopters into, to well-being, and, and that was kind of my decade forte in corporate wellness. Um, I worked on the employer side for 10 years. And then, um, after that, I, I joked that if I planned one more biometric screen event, I was going to murder somebody. I just needed to change. And, um, that's when I, I changed seats at the table and went to a consulting firm. And, um, I wish that there were more dietitians in consulting when i say that word people think oh it's it's working with brands or you know doing type of that and no 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 it's different i work for a company called mercer and um, dietitians know us because they mercer does professional liability insurance so if you have your own private practice you probably know them from that but um this is a different arm of the business um and we do consulting for health wealth and career and i sit on our health arm of the practice and uh we're a national team and there's um, a lot of us, and I'm in a niche, a niche group. So there's doctors, there's dietitians, there's social workers, there's nurses, um, just a whole group. There's about 75 of us. And we work alongside the core health and benefits consultants. So helping employers not only uh, make sure that they have the right insurance company, but what should they within the insurance company turn on? Are there any programs? Enhanced care management is their programs targeting musculoskeletal or diabetes? Does it make sense for our clients? Should we go out and look at somebody else? Uh, we sit in with our clients and look at all of their high cost claimants and see is there any trends in this data? And as a dietitian, you just see it through different eyes because you have that clinical component but you also, um, you know, can, can be a consultant as well and, and advocate for your client. So um, it's, I've been with, the, with this firm for six years. It's been the best move career-wise I could have made because it's opened so many doors for me. I've learned so many new skill sets. I've been connected to so many people beyond just the wellness industry. Um, and I, I just also can't believe... Um, from a pay perspective, I know we were kind of chatting about that earlier, but um, it's it's a difficult topic for dietitians, and and you know we all you know we we know what you know you can go to the academy and they have the the benchmarking and the survey of, of salary, and um, and yeah, to be frank, it is kind of sad, and we all would like to be making more more money, um, and I believe that consulting is an avenue that can. Uh, be a, a high, higher revenue line. Um, it, with anything, yes, you work, you work. But um, if you like a fast-paced environment, aka you're running in a million directions, it actually has been a really fun career path. And I always get excited when I come across other dietitians on LinkedIn that are kind of in the same arena. So that was like the elevator pitch from baby dietitian to <laughs> 19 yes. years later, now doing health and benefits consulting. That is pretty, that's a pretty sweet journey. I, I appreciate you sharing your story. And absolutely, I think uh, the consulting dietitian is a very, I think a lot of people aren't sure what that is. They'll be probably tell you you're non-traditional because you're not in the kitchen or you're not in on the hospital Correct. floor, but you have to I've wear multiple hats. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Welcome to the dark side. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I'm shy. Okay. 
So next question for you. Um, this is year two of being a national media spokesperson. And I know you've done a lot of work on TV while, since you've been in Dallas, um, you know, and what, what do you find has been the most enlightening and the most humbling aspect of doing media? I think the most enlightening, and I say this lovingly, is they'll put anyone on TV. And like, we'll turn on the news, they will put anybody on TV. And so I, I, I say that because I think that any time that nutrition is a topic, the other person there needs to be a dietitian. And there is room for us all here. And so if you have any interest in this, for the love of all things good, go out there and do it because we need, we need more of us and we need more experts out there communicating this. Um, and I think that that, that was probably what opened my eyes is that, that any, anybody can do this. You just, you just need, you know, we, we can help you get there. Um, the most humbling experience is I know nothing. Um, it, is, it is every interview. I think that I'm so prepared and granted you, you are going to know more than, than your audience most of the time. Right. Um, but, but without a doubt, I'm always going to get a question where I'm like, oh, I wish I would have taken a second maybe to research that a little bit more. Um, so I think that that's been the most humbling thing is me realizing how much I don't know. So I don't know if that comment is going to scare the Academy of Nutrition Dietetics. <laughs> um, but, but it's the truth. It's the truth that these, these, a lot of these reporters are very good at their job and, um, and it can sometimes be um, a delicate situation. But um, I think that's probably been the most humbling the other funny, one more humbling thing is, you know, we've, we are so lucky that, that we get to do a number of media trainings. And um, every time I walk away and I, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so great. I always take something away. And I think no matter how many times you do this, you still have, have probably terrible habits in place that, that just happen. And um, it's, always, it's always such a treat to have somebody politely call you out and help make you better. So... Those are my, my two humbling comments. I probably could tell you 99 others as well. <laughs> well, it's more constructive. People more, to be here all day. I think it's more constructive criticism that we don't. And of course, I, I want to say we're probably our, our own harshest critic because, um, for example, like in the last media training, you went up and you talked and you're like, oh, and everyone's like, no, you were great. And you're like, oh, I could have done this. Or I could have done that. And yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, you've been great and every time we see little media things pop up but you're always doing a good job so oh, like, see see dietitians are so supportive it's my heart thanks for the support absolutely no you've been good <laughs> so next question so if you could do it all over again in your career and i know you've had what we would can i guess what most people would deem non-traditional uh is there anything that you would change or what would you you know what would you keep the same Keep this. So I'm going to sound like an old lady dietitian and at the risk of sounding like an old lady dietitian, I don't care. I'm going to say it. I really was thankful for that clinical experience to start my career off with. I think that I learned um, so much in that outpatient setting from other clinicians that were more experienced than me, how to navigate situations with patients. Um, I, I did. I do. I, I look back on that time very fondly and I just, I felt like it's made me a better dietitian. Um, I know that's not a popular opinion. A lot of people just want to go out and open their own business and my hat's off to you. You got to do what's right for you. Um, I really am glad that I had that experience and I feel like it's made me a better clinician. Um, what I would do differently, I think, um, you know, if I had the opportunity, I would love to have my master's in something non-nutrition related and for the record i don't have my master's i think i'm probably the only spokesperson that doesn't i am just just your basic bachelor's caroline um <clears throat> which i've always kind of been self-conscious about i'm going to be you know if we're in the trust tree um and i have no other like i'm not you know a certified diabetes care and education specialist or any of that um so i hope maybe other dietitians will find that like encouraging i don't know but in hindsight, I do wish that I would have gone back and gotten, you know, either MBA or, or something business related, because I think when you can marry the two, you are going to go so much further um, in your career and it will open so many doors. I think when we hone in, like, unless you want, you know, to really be at the academic level, academia level, um, I think we should diversify our education. I think it's going to make us, um, you know, better business oriented people and see it through a broader lens 
Absolutely. That's my advice yeah, to no, people no, that I, I did not take that I wish I would have. <laughs> well, let's see. I mean, now, now you have a young one and you know, you're busy. So, but no, that, that is absolutely good advice. I think there's a lot of people that would agree with that, with that statement, especially if, uh, yeah, if you did a bachelor's in nutrition and then you did a master's in nu- nutrition, would there be some other skill set you could learn by diversifying, you know, doing exercise physiology, doing an MBA, doing something else and blending the two together. You know, you get the best of both worlds. So it's a, it's, a, it's a good like, point there. The other one I think I would like to do if I wasn't doing business, and I know you're not asking, I'm just here, I'm going no, to you again. Please, no, but I wish no, that definitely. like, I would love to have like, even like a communications degree or something. Like, like I, I, and I think too, like I'd love to go back to college now that I'm in my mid forties, like, and do that whole experience over versus where I was. Um, but I think that, that having that not, I wish that I was, um, just maybe a better communicator on every front, whether that's written, um, verbal, et cetera. Um, I think that's going to help you in all aspects of life. And even if you just decide to be, um, a stay at home parent, it's still going to make you better at that. So, um, that's probably the other one. If it wasn't business oriented, um, I wish that I would have considered something along, along the lines of, um, being a better communicator. Cause I think that's something you can use anywhere in your career any life Absolutely. chapter and you're doing it now so this is good <laughs> all right cool um so next question for you what does the future hold for you besides or, or i guess are you going to try to go the full nine like everybody or i really am thinking? enjoying it i i really am enjoying it um and, and i'll say this too like i i think the the controversy around that is do you want to work with brands? Right. I mean, cause that's, I think, you know, there, you are missing a revenue line and I, and I hear that since I don't work with brands, like that's not in my business model. Um, I, I just don't really have anything stopping me. I feel like, like, unless the Academy doesn't want to work with me anymore. Um, so I, I anticipate that I would like to continue. I've, I've met great people. Um, it's amazing resources, amazing training and just amazing opportunity. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just wild. It's just wild to think about the the amount of work that I've gotten to do because of this. The the Today Show, the Wall Street Journal, People Magazine. You know, I mean, I'm I'm like a pop culture queen, so like People was like pretty up there for me. But I, I I am. I'm thankful. All of this is because of the Academy, and and I just you know, it makes me feel it makes me feel proud, um, and it makes me it makes me feel so good that I have the trust of of the profession behind me to know that when I open my mouth, hopefully it's not going to be completely screwed up. Right. But to have that trust feels really good from my peers. So I would like to continue and, and gosh, like everybody, I, 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 I do, I feel like I'm the dumbest one in the room when we all get together. Everyone is just so smart and has so much experience and it's such a different backgrounds. It really is fun to, to get to chat with everybody and get to see how everyone, you know, what they're doing and their, you know, neck of the woods media wise. Um, so yeah, I, I love it. I'm a fan, so I, I hope to I hope to continue. You you're you're great. Don't worry about it. You're doing good. You're doing good. <laughs> All right. Any so besides media, what else do you think might be in the future for you in terms of business wise or career wise? You know, or? I don't it's so funny. When I came over to consulting six years ago, I was gonna do it for a year or two. Um which sounds probably like a basic millennial. I think I'm millennial. I don't know what I am, but anyway, I was just going to do it for a year or two and I was going to make all these contacts and, um, and then, and then, you know, pivot and, and figure it out. Um, I was just at a place, you know, as I alluded to earlier that, um, I really didn't like my boss. And I mean, that's the number one reason people leave their jobs is, is their boss. Mm-hmm. And I just knew I had to make a move. And so I didn't care what it was. I just, I just knew it was time. So when I made that move, I was like, whatever, I'll just do this for a year or two and, and figure it out. And here we are six years later. And like, I just, I still love it. I love the work. I've been given so many leadership opportunities um, to collaborate with different people. I don't know. It's just, it's just been a really good fit for me. So I, I, you know, I can't believe if we said like, oh, where would you be in five years? That means it would be my 11th year you know, at the firm, I don't know what that says about me. If I have like loyalty, I don't know <laughs> if I'm, if I get too comfortable, cause you know, you got to go always grow, you know, don't get too comfortable, but, um, you know, I like it. So I'm inclined to say that I would still be, you know, kind of in the same, um, same business on the flip side of that. Um, 
maybe not this year, but when, when the market is back, there's a lot of really neat health startups. Um, and so I've gotten to meet a lot of, again, really smart people. So I think that if that opportunity ever presented itself and the time was right, that would be maybe something I would consider is what can, you know, yeah, getting in early somewhere to help, you know, hopefully it's some innovative thing that would be helping a lot of people. Um, so watching those kind of grow and catch on with employers has been fun the past six years. So I think it'd be cool to be a part of something like that. Awesome. Okay. Well, the final question for you, you've made it through, you've been in the hot seat for, <laughs> you know, 20 minutes here. So you're still doing great. Here. Uh, any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? And I know you've mentioned some things throughout, just you know, if you want to, you know, any words of wisdom, what, what, what would you have to say? I think the first thing that I would tell people is say yes and figure it out later, which is probably terrible advice, but I don't care. Say yes and figure it out later. Um, I, I just think that we kind of what you said, we're our toughest critic. And I think that the fear of failing stops us a lot and just, just don't, just don't like progress over perfection. Just say yes and figure it out later. Um, and then on the flip side of that, like, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, I think, when you get down to it, it really is a supportive profession. There's been so many times where I have reached out and just at, at, like, will you be my mentor? Or can I just ask you some questions? Or what do you think about this? Um, and I'm real lucky. Um, the, the, the Dallas dietitian community is just fantastic. And we have a lot of support. It's very supportive. And I think it's one of those things where I, I wish there were more. I don't view any of us as competition. I, I, there needs to be more of us. We need to get more people in this profession to help people. Um, and I, and it, it, it does feel like it, it, it's we're, we're you know lifting each other up. And so I, I want a young dietitian to hear that. If there's somebody that you like from a career perspective that's doing something, like follow those people on social or reach out to them. Nine times out of 10, they want to help you and want to talk to you. And maybe the 10 time out of 10 where they can't, it's probably just scheduling. It's not you. Or they miss the DM or whatever it is. Like just reach out because I think you'll be surprised at how many people just want to want to help and want the future of our profession to be in good hands. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I, uh, those are great words of advice. No, I would, I would, you know, finish off by, by thanking you for, for your words here. I could talk all day with you. I know. <laughs> I know, right. Can we have like a happy hour version of this? And we like make Absolutely. Chat? Okay. Well, we can have like, I'm add, add more people on and we can just have a fireside chat talk. Well, I, I was saying in another episode that I want to do like a hot sauce after dark so we can talk about yes. different topics. You know, like I think the weight management versus healthy at every size or, you know, bombs away on social media or any anything just kind of have a free-flowing conversation see where it I takes love us it. but no i'm here for no. it so all right well cool well thank you very much stay on the before we end this video i want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor it's me your greatest gift if you are watching this on YouTube is to like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, and share this content. If you are listening on a podcast platform, please share away. And of course, if you want to buy me a coffee, you can go to buy me a coffee and share a beverage my way. And if you want to purchase one for the guests that I just interviewed, send it my way and I will get to that individual. Thank you very much for watching and have a great rest of your day.